Okay class, we're talking about soil temperature today. And so seed germination is one of the first things that I want to talk to you about. A lot of times the seasonality of crops or uh, native plants for that matter can be um, determined by the seeds need for a certain temperature in the soil. And so certain plants like tomatoes and peppers and even grape seeds like to germinate when there's warm conditions, ensuring with the soil warmth, ensuring that the seed will um, have potential to grow and complete its life cycle in the appropriate season. Other plants that need uh, cool temperatures such as lettuce or even peas and many other plants will germinate under cool conditions, either growing um, in mild climates in winter cool conditions or growing in cool season um, summer areas. And so the soil temperature, um, it, it's actually a dormancy in the seed to only germinate when those temperatures have been met. Um, so part of that um, process, like I mentioned with the grape seed, it needs warm temperatures to germinate, but a lot of times these temperate zone seeds need to go through a cool, moist period. That would mimic a um, wintertime type response so that it ensures in the seed that it's gone through a cool, moist period, therefore passing up the winter season and then germinating in the spring. Because if you could think about on these perennial plants, like a grapevine, if it was to drop its seeds in the fall, and then have spring-like conditions, uh, warm conditions in the fall with adequate moisture and such, then that seed would germinate and then be quickly killed by, um, by winter freeze. So a lot of temperate zone plants, especially long-lived perennial plants, they sometimes need to go through a cool moist period. The opposite is true, some plants need to go through a, a warm damp period. Uh, for those seeds to germinate and a lot of that has to do with soil temperatures and so the cool moist one is called vernalization which they call it in your textbook I like to refer to it as stratification um, and then the opposite is you can have a um, warm moist period of time that is a, um, a warm moist stratification um, the reason that we're here is because this area was charred by fire and so this was not a naturally occurring fire this was a uh, spot where I um, piled some debris and rubbish and I burned um, plant debris and corn stalks and waste like that. And this kind of area mimics what's happening in the natural environment, mi mimics what you would experience in a agricultural setting. And so with this fire, this fire was intense right in this circular spot here. You can see what's left of the charred remains of uh, probably my Christmas tree from last winter. And this fire got pretty hot. And so what it did was it killed the top inch or so of soil. I mean it's it's um, it's dead. It's um, the seeds are gone, all the microbial life, any uh, disease present is has been killed out. But interestingly enough you see some of these um, uh, longer lived perennial plants that have a deep tap root. They actually came back after the fire. But all the native grasses and the native weeds and such that are growing thick leading right up to here, there's a perfect circular ring no seeds are growing in there, only the native deep root, uh, tap rooted plants. And I, I shouldn't say native because these are the um, purple nightshade, and so that's a weed in our area, but it would mimic what a native plant with a deep tap root could do to uh, avoid fire. And so in our area, um, fire, and it's been, uh, it's an ongoing cycle. Fire is part of the natural cycle. And as far as forest soils go, the, um, they've, they've changed over time and the dynamics of our uh, western arid forests have changed quite a bit too because um, uh, larger trees have um, moved into areas where there's typically less rainfall and the density has increased because as humans we've been doing a really good job of putting out fires for say the past hundred years or so and by doing such a good job at that we've actually changed the natural cycle of the fire regimes. They can go back and look at ponderosa pine, they can look at the, um, the growth rings that are put down and historically they can count back a certain amount of years, seven, ten years or so and get a fire regime cycle. The fires moved through, there was a little bit of brush, debris, small plants on the floor a quick fire came through, cleaned all the, that up. But what's happened over time is by fire suppression, those, um, those young plants, the shrubby stuff, has grown up bigger and bigger and bigger, and you get a lot of small um, diameter ponderosa pines, for, for instance, growing in not a healthy situation. The fire comes through and goes top to top, 
and it burns through those. And then following that, the fire is so much hotter than it used to be, and it also kills the soil, just similar to this. Instead of being a quick, quick uh, grass fire, which they have you know, in Great Plains and areas like that, these fires had a lot of wood around, a lot of down debris, burning for long periods of time, and uh, continued to be uh, a problem because after the fact the soils are degraded the plant material is gone the roots aren't holding those together it's a lot of bare mineral soil like this um, when I see rainfall in this area the water just pools on top of there it infiltrates around here now this is flat ground but you think about all the really bad wildfires we've had in Arizona in recent past now the big problem they're having is that all the plant material is dead and when you get heavy rains the soil is just washing away causing um, secondary disasters um, stemming from the first disaster. And so um, another thing about our soils, I brought this um, evergreen plant out here. This is a spruce tree. Um, in our area, such as the, you know, the Prescott area, the Verde Valley area, it gets a lot colder in the winter than uh, down in, say, Phoenix and such. And so plants, any evergreen plants, now I have one that's a higher elevation evergreen, but if this plant was a juniper or a, um, a pine, like an elderica, desert type pine, any evergreen plants that grow in these really dry climates, we have a very dry winter climate. Although some high elevation places get adequate um, soil moisture through uh, snow and uh, winter rains, the, the daytime humidity levels are so low and we still have good sun intensity. So these evergreen plants, continue the process of losing moisture from their needles and the, the root systems aren't able to take up because of the cold soil temperatures or even surface frozen um, soil temperatures so they, they, um, they desiccate due to the low humidity and the drying winds so that's why people a lot of times uh, even broadleaf evergreens you gotta do a little bit of irrigation in the winter if you haven't had any moisture for say a month or so Another thing that I want to talk about is mulches. Uh, mulches can cool the soil in warm climates and we use those a lot to kill, help keep the soil cool, grow plants that aren't typically from this climate or to help plants that are from this climate do better. You can do that with mulch or compost and typically a nice four to six inch layer around a plant would help cool the roots and then aid in aeration as well which we've been talking about. Uh, an interesting type of mulch that we're using, people think mulch, they think organic, but we're using a mulch, uh, and you see a lot of examples of this in the textbook, a plastic mulch. We're actually doing this in the organic garden at Chino Valley. This fall we planted out about 500 cabbage plants to grow, and so we go from a super hot climate where the soils are almost too hot to sprout and germinate cabbage, so we sprout them in the greenhouse under controlled conditions, and then as the temperatures start to cool, we move them out to the outside and then we take advantage of a long fall growing season by putting down a black mulch. It's a one millimeter thick, it just looks like black plastic sheeting. We lay that down, it's one mil, um, we poke holes in it and we plant the cabbage plants into there and inside that black um, plastic we're keeping the soil uh, warmer. Now we couldn't do this through the summer because then that temperature would be so high in there it would kill everything in there and it would solarize under that mulch. But as the sun angle starts to lower and um, the day, nights, the day uh, gets cooler and the nights get down near freezing, there'll be a bubble of warmth down in there where the roots are growing. Now cabbage is tolerant of a light frosting and a light freeze, but with that plastic we'll be able to grow those um, up through the whole month of October. So it's kind of an experiment. If you're out that way you can take a look um, and uh, that's the basics of soil temperature.